Jason was a very loving and caring person. Um, the morning that he got, the day that he got killed, he he was working on my house. He was helping me remodel the house. Corbin took every step that her dad took. And they were in the playroom and Jason was mudding the wall and uh, he let Corbin help mud the wall. And she mud this big, huge glob of mud on the wall. And instead of Jason getting mad like most people would have got mad, he come in there and he said, Mom, come and see the portrait your granddaughter did. And I come in there and I said, Oh, Corbin, that is so pretty. And uh, he said, Let's put a frame around it, Mom, and let's just leave it. I said, that sounds like a good idea. And uh, Corbin was so excited. She said, oh, Grammy, I love it. I love it. And uh, Jason was just going on and on about it and how how pretty it was. And and uh, Corbin was, you know, she was all excited. She thought, oh, I've done such a good job. And uh, Jason, so we, Jason left it and and I thought we were going to honestly leave that big pile of mud on my wall. And we'd already said that that was going to be the wall that was going to do a chalk wall on the wall. And I'm thinking, what am I going to do? I can't, you know, we can't have a chalk wall with a big pot of water, mud on it. But I wasn't going to say anything because Jason, you know, he, that's the type of father he was. Whatever his kids, you know, he never, he was, he disciplined them, but he did it in a way that they knew it, did not know it, but they understood. Jason was a type child that could do anything <coughs> growing up. I mean, he, he just, I mean, he could wire your house, he could plumb the house, he could, like most firefighters, he could do everything. And he worked hard, he worked very hard. You know, all of us in emergency service, first responders, we find our coping mechanism. I was a chief of detectives and he was with me and he was talking about becoming a police officer. I said, son, please don't do this. And I said, you know, but, and that, a fire truck was backing in and I said, be a fireman. I said, you know, everybody loves you. You're not going to make people mad. You can always be the hero. I said, don't be a police officer. And uh, so that's, he said, well, I really, that's what I've always wanted to do. And he did. He, he loved it. And he began his fire career. I was a city councilman. And while I was a city councilman, he could not be a fireman because of the nepotism. So I refused to run the second term so he could be a fireman. And um, he was there 11 years, he loved it, worshiped his family, his nieces, and nephews, his children. Um, and that's the way I tried to live my life. That's the way his mother and I brought him up, to be compassionate, tolerant, and care for other people. And as you well know, that's what it takes to be a good first responder. And uh, Jason was, unbelievably strong. He was just a, a very kind hearted person. He loved to fish. He loved to hunt. And um, being outdoors. <coughs> but what he loved more than that was to carry his family fishing or hunting and to teach his children about fishing and hunting. But when the call went out he answered. And that was Jason. I mean, if he could get there and he could be at a fire, the first, the fire chief that hired him, Don Kelly, <coughs> he said that uh, my problem will not be getting Jason to go into a burning house, it'll be trying to keep him out. And uh, he loved it. 
He was perfect. I always joked with him. He could do anything. Just pick it up and he'd be perfect at it. First try. And no, I'm sorry. <clears throat> like they said, he was more like my dad. Then he He was just the best man and I just miss him so much and I mean just without him here it's just like life has changed so much and I don't know, he was just uh, just a great man. What I miss the most about him is like when I get upset about something or I just want to like talk about it, like I just miss being able to call him and him making me feel better. And our rock is gone. I was driving the four-wheeler one time and it was like the, it was the day before that, he, dad drove right into it and got stuck and he had to go to work that next day. He looked at me and said, Kason, don't you dare ride that four-wheeler in that pond. I was driving around. I didn't even go into it. There's like a curve you can go into it. So I went in there. I got stuck. I called him. I said, you can't be mad at me. He said, why can't I be mad at you? Because you've done the exact same thing. He said, you got a name and I've done a lot of stuff. I drew the fool into the pond by. <laughs> and, um... <laughs> He called and he said, well, no, 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 wait. And he said, you drew the fool into the pond? I said, yeah. And he said, son, why do you have to do that? <laughs> Jason had been a firefighter for about seven or eight years. I get a phone call. There was a huge sagebrush field in the summertime, about this time of year in October. Dried, well, Kason was probably seven, somewhere along in there. And uh, I get a phone call at my house, and he said, Dad, I said, yeah, what is it, son? He said, I think you're going to be minus a grandson. I said, so what's happened? He said, Kason and his friend were playing in the sage field. Oh. <laughs> and the field caught on fire. So you got the fireman. Kason and and his friend had been out there, and the field catches on fire and burns about three acres. And, uh, but he took it in stride. I said, just calm down, buddy. I said, you know how things were when you were growing up and what daddy did? I said, uh, you know, we'll take care of it. Don't worry about it. So I think he had a talk with Kason, and Kason learned a big lesson. But um, the phone call and the tone of his voice when he called me to let me know that the neighborhood fireman's son had burned the field down was priceless.